Section 3.1 is on frequency distributions. A frequency distribution is a summary technique that organizes data into classes and provides in tabular form a list of the classes along with number I'm sorry, along with the number of observations in each class. So imagine that you had a big set of data, you know, maybe something like 30 numbers in front of you. Maybe it was um, the heart rates of 30 different patients. You know, just looking at that big set of data, you're not, I mean, you'd be able to tell a couple of things, but if you didn't have any names or anything like that, you were just looking at the raw data. There's got to be some way to take that data and organize it in a way that would be helpful for others to understand the data a little bit better. Okay, And making a frequency distribution is a method of organizing that data. So, you know, there's all different types of um, frequency distributions and the way that the data is uh, is given. Let me show you an example real quick of just a basic frequency distribution. This frequency distribution, you don't have to copy it down, it's in your book. Um, this frequency distribution it says is uh, frequency distribution state 10-year population growth rate. It's a state 10-year population growth rate. Um, and then this would be the percentage population growth between these two, I guess, in 10 years. And so it's not just one state, it's, it's uh, all states. All right, and then it tells you how many are in this class. These are classes, these things listed here. All of those, those are classes. And so a frequency distribution table will take the number that's in that class and list it. So, you know, what this means, this number right here, seven. This means that seven states were between 0 0.01 to 5, and I would think that's probably, yeah, it is percentages. So, you know, between 
zero one percent and five percent there were seven states between five point zero one and ten there were eighteen states and so this just is a way of summarizing data so that someone else that was looking at the data would be able to understand it. Okay, so you start with just some big raw set of data and then somebody takes that set of data and organizes it and puts it in a frequency chart and then we have to be able to interpret that data. And of course, you know, it could be just really any type of data. It doesn't have to be one type or another. Um, you can look and see that the difference between, I don't really, I mean you can count this first as a class because below zero I guess that means there was no growth, right? But you can see the difference in these classes say from this lower number here to this lower number here and this lower number here to this lower number here. These are all the same differences. Okay, and the same for the upper number. They, they, I'm calling them just real basic terms. They do have, um, they do have like official names, but like from this upper number to this upper number, you can see the difference there is it's pretty uniform as you go down, meaning it's the same as you go down from class to class. You know, and that's the way that you would want the classes to be because if they weren't then the data could be very misleading you could try to trick somebody maybe or, or something like that we don't want that to happen all right so your book does go through several examples of frequency distributions um, and some frequency distributions may have percentages, some may have um, just counts like this, or just a frequency. Um, so there are several different types of frequency distributions. And 3.1 just basically gives you four or five examples. I'll show you a different one one that would uh, just have percentages and this is called a relative frequency distribution so you can see these classes this tells you it says in general how would you rate the quality of American public schools so these classes don't actually have numbers, they're just the ratings that were used. And then someone took all of the raw data from this survey and they converted over. Instead of telling you how many people thought that it was excellent, pretty good, fair, poor, or not sure, they converted this to a percentage. Okay, so just another way of representing data in a frequency distribution. And that's pretty much all of 3.1.